Hello, word nerds. Here we go with another episode. We're going to read about a quarter of a page. This is the last quarter of the third page. Yes, you heard me, the third page. If my memory serves, we are on episode, let's see, 11, I think. Yeah, we're really speeding along. Okay, let's get into it. Oh, and uh, for any of you new listeners, uh, uh, you can email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com or on Twitter, dictionarypod. Uh, it's just at dictionarypod. I was expecting there to be something else at the end. Okay, first entry for today is A bomb, capital A dash bomb. Noun from 1945. Yep, that's an appropriate year. It just means atomic bomb. That really messed some stuff up. Next entry. Abominable. This is a word I always have a hard time saying. Abominable. Adjective. One. Worthy of or causing disgust or hatred. Synonym is detestable. As in, the abominable treatment of the poor. Yeah, we've got pretty crappy treatment of the poor. Uh, Maybe some uh, compassion will help with that. If anybody's in a position to help somebody who is poor or uh, or needy in any way... Please do it. Thanks. Uh, Number two, quite disagreeable or unpleasant, as in abominable weather. Uh, I live in the Chicago area, and we sometimes get abominable weather either in the peak of summer or peak of winter. All right, next entry. Abominable snowman or snow person, whatever your preference, or snow woman for that matter. 1921. A mysterious creature with human or ape-like characteristics reported to exist in the high Himalayas, also called a yeti, Y-E-T-I. Next entry, abominate. Now, some of these uh, have a a good amount of uh, information before the actual definition, and I've mentioned this before, a lot of it is weird uh, abbreviations that I don't quite understand, but I'm going to read a little bit of it. Um, To deprecate, deprecate? Deprecate as an ill omen. That's kind of the main part that I can read. 1597, to hate or loathe intensely. Abhor, A-B-H-O-R. Another synonym says C, hate. Abominator, abominator is the noun. Next is abomination, a noun. One, something abominable. Two, extreme disgust and hatred. Synonym is loathing. Next is aboral, A-B-O-R-A-L. Adjective from 1857, situated opposite to or away from the mouth, as in a sea urchin's aboral surface. Aborally is the adverb situated opposite to or away from the mouth so so I guess my feet would be a boral I don't know if you uh, have more information email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com next is aboriginal aboriginal and man I can't believe that I never really put this two together the uh, prefix of this word is ab a b and the rest is the word original which just means this is myself speaking that just means you know the first uh, what was originally there you know like the original flavor of potato chips Uh, this is an adjective from 1650 one being the first or earliest known of its kind present in a region as in aboriginal forests or aboriginal rocks. And I'm not exactly sure why the ab is added uh, to the prefix, but maybe I'll learn that later. Uh, So next part is 2a, of or relating to aborigines. 2b, often capitalized, uh, of or relating to the indigenous peoples of Australia. Uh, So it's just saying... um, if it's, if it's capitalized, that means it's the uh, indigenous people of Australia. Uh, synonym would be native, and aboriginally is the adverb. Next is another form of aboriginal, noun from 1749. One is just aborigine, that's the uh, synonym. Uh, two, uh, capitalized version would be aborigine. 
That's the same thing I just read. Okay. Next entry is Aborigine. We sense a pattern. Uh, let's see. Maybe this describes where the ab comes from. It looks like French, maybe. Ab origine from the beginning. From the beginning. I think that's where what it means. Uh, from 1593. One, an aboriginal inhabitant, especially as contrasted with an invading or colonizing people. Uh, number two, cap often capitalized. Uh, that's in italics, by the way. Uh, so, you know, if it's a capitalized, it means a member of any of the indigenous peoples of Australia. So I wonder how they got the term aborigine, but in other areas, like I'm in America, obviously we have the American Indians or Native Americans, whatever term you want to use. Um, you know, they, we, we don't call them aborigines. So I, f I find that interesting. Maybe I will look that up later. Maybe I'll forget. So as I was uh, editing this, I was reminded, uh, so I did not forget. Um, I did do a, a quick little search. Um, it turns out that the word aborigine, uh, while uh, not exactly being culturally appropriate, uh, it can be used to describe uh, the native people of a certain area. Um, we don't obviously use this in everyday language, um, but obviously we do uh, in Australia. Next is Aborning, A-B-O-R-N-I-N-G, an adverb uh, from 1837, while being born or produced, as in a resolution that died aborning. Uh, next is another form of aborning, form of aborning, adjective from 1943, being born or produced, as in the aborning fiasco. I can honestly say I'm pretty sure I've never uh, used or heard of this word. But that's kind of why I'm reading the dictionary. Next is abort, A-B-O-R-T. So uh, in the, uh, the pre-description, I think that is basically um, giving you the, I guess, the etymology uh, or where the word came from. I think it is saying uh, from the Latin abortus, and the plural maybe is aboriri, which means to miscarry. And then it looks like French, ab plus oriri. Again, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Means to rise or be born. Uh, so from 1540, one, to bring forth stillborn, non-viable or premature offspring. Number two, to become checked in development so as to degenerate or remain rudimentary. Three, to terminate a procedure prematurely, as in the pilot decided to abort due to mechanical difficulties. Now we have a new one, new uh, description. I think one is a verb and the other is a different form of a verb. Um, so this is 1A, to induce the abortion of or give birth to prematurely. 1B, to terminate the pregnancy of before term. Did I read that right? To terminate the pregnancy of before term. 2A, to terminate prematurely. Synonym is cancel, as in abort a project or abort a space flight. 2B, to stop in the early stages, as in abort a disease. The noun is aborter. Just a few more for this episode. Another version of abort, noun from 1944. The premature termination of a flight as of an aircraft or spacecraft, a mission, or an action or procedure relating to a flight, as in a launch abort. So clearly there's some, uh, some duplication there, but, you know, dictionary is just trying to be specific. Next is, let's see if I can read this one, a abortifacient, abortifacient, abortifacient. Abortifacient, I think that's what it is. Noun from 1857. Don't you love how you're sort of learning along with me or getting to experience me learning on the fly? Uh, so this is an agent as a drug that induces abortion. Abortifacient. Uh, by the way, it is spelled A-B-O-R-T-I-F-A-C-I-E-N-T. 
C-I-E-N-T. Next and last entry is abortion. Noun from around 1537. One, the termination of a pregnancy after accompanied by resulting in or closely followed by the death of the embryo or fetus. 1a, spontaneous expulsion of a human fetus during the first 12 weeks of gestation, compared to miscarriage. 1b, induced expulsion of a human fetus. And 1c, forgive me, I have to turn the page for this one, expulsion of a fetus by a domestic animal, often due to infection at any time before completion of pregnancy. Compare it to contagious abortion. So that's interesting. That's I think this that is saying that um, animals. It specifically says domestic animals. Although I don't know why it couldn't be wild animals. Will uh, abort a pregnancy. Let me just go back to the other page. Sorry for the noise. Uh, yes, it, I think there's. I think it's saying that um, an animal will abort its pregnancy. Um, if it knows that it's sick or won't be able to give uh, give birth or if it knows that there will be a problem with the birth um, and or a problem with the uh, with the with the baby or baby is plural since a lot of animals give birth to litters um, so I think this is interesting because I think animals are way more in tune with their bodies and what's going on than we humans are I think we've lost that a lot but moving on, uh, this is number two. Uh, synonym is monstrosity, which is an interesting form, interesting choice. Uh, number three is arrest of development as of a part or process resulting in imperfection, also a result of such arrest. And uh, I think that will be it for today since we're at the top of page four now. And this was a little bit of a long episode. And I'll uh, talk to you in the next one. Thank you and good night. Hello, word nerds. Let's get right into it. First entry today is abortionist. Noun from 1861. One who induces abortions. I never knew that they were called abortionists, but I guess that makes sense. Next is abortion pill. Noun from 1871. A drug taken orally to induce abortion, especially early in pregnancy. Uh, and it is saying RU486, which I believe uh, is the, uh, the, the name of the abortion pill. Or maybe one of them. Maybe there's more than one. I don't know. So I went ahead and looked this up. RU486 um, is also known as uh, mifepristone or mifepristone. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. That is the scientific term for the abortion pill. Next entry is abortive, A-B-O-R-T-I-V-E, adjective. Uh, one obsolete form of it, it means prematurely born. Number two, synonyms are fruitless, unsuccessful. Three, imperfectly formed or developed. Four, tending to cut short. Abortively is the adverb and abortiveness is the noun. Next is ABO system. ABO is all caps. Noun from 1944, the basic system of antigens of human blood behaving in hereditary, nope, heredity as in allelic unit to produce any of the ABO blood groups. I don't know what allelic is, but I believe I will learn that in the future. Next is abound. One, to be present in large numbers or in great quantity. Be prevalent. Uh, number two, to be copiously supplied, used within or with, as in life abounded in mysteries. That's a line from Norman Mailer. Or, as in, institutions abound with evidence of his success. That's from the Johns Hopkins Magazine. Next entry is the word about. An adverb. 1A, reasonably close to, as in about a year ago. 
1B. A synonym is almost, as in about starved. 1C, on the verge of, usually used with B, B-E, and a following infinitive, as in is about to join the army, used with a negative to express intention or determination, as in not about to quit. 2. On all sides. Synonym is around. 3a. In rotation. 3b. Around the outside. 4. Synonym is here and there. 5. In the vicinity or near. 6. In the opposite direction, as in face about or the other way about. Here's another form of the word about, uh, just a different uh, entry in the dictionary. Preposition 1. In a circle around, on every side of. Synonym is around. 2a. In the immediate neighborhood of, near. 2b. On or near the person of. 2c. In the makeup of, as in a mature wisdom about him. 2d. At the command of, as in has his wits about him. 3. Engaged in, as in act as if they know what they're about. That's from T.S. Matthews. 4a. With regard to, Concerning, as in, spoke about his past. 4b, concerned with. 4c, fundamentally concerned with or directed toward, as in, poker is about money. And that is from David Mamet. And 5, over or in different parts of. And here we have a third version of about. This is the adjective from 1815. 1. Moving from place to place, specifically being out of bed. And number 2 is around, just the synonym around. Next is about face. This one we saw in the previous definition of one of our forms of about. This is the noun from 1861. 1. A 180 degree turn to the right from the position of attention. I didn't know it had to be to the right, but... I guess they needed some uh, standards in that. Number two, a reversal of direction. Number three, a reversal of attitude, behavior, or point of view. Next is about turn, noun from 1893. Uh, Looks like it is the British form of about face. And with that, I'm going to end the episode because it looks like the next one, two, three, four... Entries are all the word above, four different uh, forms of it, all with uh, multiple definitions. So thank you for listening. If you want to email me, uh, dictionarypod at gmail.com or on the tweets at dictionarypod. Thank you, word nerds. Talk to you later. Hello, word nerds. Spencer here, and uh, this is going to be a slightly longer episode I am predicting, so let's jump right into it. First entry is above, and uh, if you listen to the last episode, uh, there are four versions of above, and if you're new to this podcast, if you're listening for the first time, uh, you can contact me uh, on Twitter, at DictionaryPod, and on Gmail, nope, on email, at DictionaryPod at gmail.com. All right, first entry, above, adverb, 1A, in the sky. Overhead is the synonym, as in the clouds above. 1b, in or to heaven. 2a, in or to a higher place. 2b, higher on the same page or on a preceding page. 2c, upstairs, that's the synonym. 2d, above zero, as in 10 degrees above. 3 in or to a higher rank or number, as in 30 and above. 4. The archaic version is, means, in addition or besides. 5. Synonym is upstage. 
We are on to the second version of above. It's a preposition, 1a, in or to a higher place than. Synonym is over. 1b, up river of. 2a, a superior to, as in rank, quality, or degree. 2b, out of reach of, as in above suspicion. 2c, in preference to. 2d, too proud or honorable to stoop to, as in not above taking undue credit. 3. Exceeding in number, quantity, or size, more than, as in men above 50 years old. 4. As distinct from and in addition to, as in heard the whistle above the roar of the crowd. Third version of above is a noun. 1a. Something that is above. 1b. A person whose name is written above. 2a. A higher authority. 2b. Synonym is heaven. Uh, and here's some information on its usage. Although still objected to by some, the use of above as a noun in sense 1a and as an adjective uh, has been long established as standard. And some examples uh, for noun, one is none of the above. Another is from William Blake. It says, the above is Theseus's opinion. Uh, and uh, some examples for the adjective. First one is without the above reserve. That's from O.W. Holmes, 1935. Another example is from Viscount Montgomery, or Viscount Montgomery. I'm not sure of the pronunciation of that. And that is, I was brought up on the above words. All right, fourth and final form of the word above is adjective from 1604. Written or discussed higher on the same page or on a preceding page. Next is, above all, adverb, before every other consideration. Synonym is especially. Next is above board. Adverb. The difficulty of cheating at cards when the hands are above the table. From 1950, uh, no, 1594. In a straightforward manner. Synonym is openly. Uh, next is above board, another form of it. Adjective, 1648. Free from all traces of deceit or duplicity. Next is above ground. Adjective from 1878. One, located or occurring on or above the surface of the ground. Two, existing, produced, or published by or within the establishment, as in above ground movies. Next is, this looks like it's two words, ab Ovo, A-B space O-V-O, adverb circa 1586, from the beginning. And uh, it looks like the uh, comes from the Latin, or it is Latin, literally meaning from the egg. Next is A-B-P, all lowercase. It's an abbreviation for archbishop. Next is A-B-R, all lowercase, abbreviation for abridged or abridgment. Next is abracadabra from 1565. One, a magical charm or incantation. Number two, unintelligible language. Next is abraid, A-B-R-A-D-E. Looks like the Latin is abradere, which means to scrape off. From 1677, 1a, to rub or wear away, especially by friction. Erode is a synonym. I hope that I'm uh, saying that these are synonyms and that is correct. I'm pretty sure. 1b, to irritate or roughen by rubbing. 2, to wear down in spirit. Synonyms are irritate and weary. To undergo abrasion. Abradable is adjective and abrader is the noun. Abraham with a capital A. Noun. Uh, looks like 
Greek is Abram, A-B-R-A-A-M, and uh, Hebrew is Abraham, an Old Testament patriarch regarded by Jews as the founder of the Hebrew people through his son Isaac and by Muslims as the founder of the Arab peoples through his son Ishmael. Next is Abrasion, 1554, 1A, a wearing, grinding, or rubbing away by friction. 1B, synonym is irritation. 2, an abraded area of the skin or mucous membrane. Next entry is abrasive, adjective from 1849. 1. Tending to abraid. 2. Causing irritation, as in abrasive manners. Abrasively is the adverb, and abrasiveness is a noun. Next form of abrasive is noun, 1853. A substance, as emery or pumice or pumice, uh, used for abrading, smoothing, or polishing. Next is abreaction. Ab reaction. Noun. From 1912. The expression and emotional discharge of unconscious material as a repressed idea or emotion by verbalization, especially in the presence, nope, not presence, presence of a therapist. Ab react is verb. Next entry is abreast. A B R E A S T. Uh, adverb or adjective, one, beside one another with bodies in line, as in columns of men, five abreast. Two, up to a particular standard or level, especially of knowledge of recent developments, as in keeps abreast of the news. And uh, last entry for today, a bridge, 1A, archaic f- uh, synonym is deprive. 1b, to reduce in scope. Diminish is a synonym, as in attempts to abridge the right of free speech. Number two, to shorten in duration or extent, as in modern transportation that abridges distance. Three, to shorten by omission of words without sacrifice of sense. Condense is uh, a synonym. Another synonym is shorten. Abridger is the noun. And uh, we'll just do one more just because it's related. Abridgment uh, is a noun. One, the action of abridging, the state of being abridged. Two, a shortened form of a work retaining the general sense and unity of the original. And with that, we'll end this episode. Thank you for listening. Again, if you want to email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. Twitter is diction- at dictionarypod. Thank you, word nerds, for listening. I appreciate your support. Good night. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the next episode of The Dictionary. First word today is a brooch. Adverb or ad- adjective. Number one. The archaic form is in a condition or letting out a liquid, uh, as wine. Number two, another archaic form is in action or agitation. A synonym is uh, astir, A-S-T-I-R, as in mischiefs that I set a brooch. That is from Shakespeare. Uh, Next is abroad. Uh, Adverb or adjective, number one, over a wide area, widely. Number two, away from one's home. Number three, beyond the boundaries of one's country. Number four, in wide circulation, about. Number five, wide of the mark, astray. Next word is abrogate. Abrogated, abrogating. Um, I am uh, learning a little bit more of of some of the um, abbreviations and weird things that are in here. So I'm going to see if I can decipher this. The etymology, Latin abrogatus. And I think it's maybe the plural is or uh, abrogare uh, from, from ab, a-b, 
plus rogare, which means to ask uh, or propose a law. Uh, and then it says more at right. And I don't know what that means. Okay, from 1526, uh, number one, to abolish by authoritative action, annul. Number two, to treat as non-existent, as in abrogating their responsibilities. Synonym says C, nullify. Abrogation is a noun. Next is abrupt, adjective, uh, from the Latin abruptus, from, uh, I, I don't know if this is, yes, this is the um, uh, the verb form, abrumpere. I actually took a couple years of Latin in high school, so I should be able to read some of these Latin words. Uh, that means to break off. Uh, it's formed from ab plus rompere, which means to break. Uh, it says more at the word reeve, R-E-A-V-E, from 1531A, characterized by or involving action or change without preparation or warning, unexpected, uh, as in came to an abrupt stop, or as in an abrupt turn. Another example, an abrupt decision to retire. 1B, unceremoniously curt, as in an abrupt manner. 1C, lacking smoothness or continuity, as in an abrupt transition. 2. Giving the impression of being cut or broken off, especially involving a sudden steep rise or drop, as in abrupt hills, or a high abrupt bank bounded the stream. Synonym says uh, C, precipitate, or steep. Abruptly is the adverb, abruptness is a noun. Next, we have abruption, noun from 1606, a sudden breaking off or away. Next, we have ABS, all lowercase, abbreviation for one, absolute, or two, abstract. Next is ABS, all caps, noun, stands for, ooh, let's see if I can pronounce this, acryl, acryl, not trial, nope. This is really fun for you trying to hear me pronounce this. Acrylonitrile. Acrona. This is just the first part. Acrylonitrile. Butadien styrene. From 1964. A tough, rigid plastic used especially for automobile parts and building materials. Uh, another form of ABS, all caps, this is an abbreviation for one, the American Bible Society, or two, anti-lock breaking system. Next is abscess, a noun. Plural is abscesses. Uh, this is from the Latin abscessus, uh, literally act of going away. Uh, it's from absidere, which means to go away. Uh, it's from the... Uh, Abs, A-B-S, or A-B, plus sedere, which means to go. From 1615, a localized collection of pus surrounded by inflamed tissue. An adjective is abscessed. Next, we have abscise. Verb, uh, abscised, abscising. It's from the Latin abscissus. I can't remember if this C is pronounced as a K, so it could be abs. I can't remember. Uh, the verb form is abscedere, abscedere, which is from uh, combining abs and caedere, C-A-E-D-E-R-E, -E -E, which means to cut. From 1612, to separate as a flower from a stem, by abscission. Next, we have abscisic acid, a noun from abscission, uh, plus ick, 1968, a plant hormone, which is C15H20O4, that is a sesquiterpene, uh, widespread in nature, and that typically promotes leaf abscission and dormancy and has an inhibitory effect on cell elongation. Next is abscission, uh, noun, 1961, 
it just says abscisic acid. Uh, next we have abscissa, A B S C I S S A, and I should uh, notate that everything since abscess starts with A B S C. I know that's not always perfectly clear. All right, so abscissa, uh, noun plural is abscissus, with an a s at the end, or abscissi with an a e. This is from the Latin uh, feminine form of abscissus or abscissus, uh, from the uh, verb abscindere to cut off, forming ab and scindere, which means to cut. And it says more at the word shed. It's from uh, 1694, the horizontal coordinate of a point in a plane Cartesian coordinate system obtained by measuring parallel to the x-axis. Compare to the word ordinate. And there is a little chart to the right that uh, gives a little uh, visual description of what abscissa is. Um, on the xy coordinate um, coordinate system, if you go up on the y coordinate system about halfway, they have a letter A. And then there's a line to the left and then there's a letter P, and it says AP abscissa of point P. If I sat with that, I could understand it a little bit better, but I'm sure it's not that difficult. Uh, next, and uh, we'll say this is the last one for today, abscission, A-B-S-C-I-S-S-I-O-N, a noun. Uh, and again, I've learned a little bit more about this uh, etymology stuff. This is saying it's from the... Uh, Middle English word abscission, A-B-S-C-I-S-I-O-U-N, from the, ooh, I didn't notice what A-F was. I'll have to look that up later. Uh, abscission. Latin in, is uh, ab abscission, abscissio, from the word abscindere. I think we've seen that a few times already. One, the act or process of cutting off, removal. Number two, the natural separation of flowers, fruit, or leaves from plants at a special separation layer. And with that, we will finish this episode. Thank you for listening. You can tweet me at uh, dictionarypod, or you can email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. Thank you, and I will talk to you later. Hello, word nerds. Thank you for joining me for another episode. Get right into it. Next word, or the first one for today, is abscond. From the Latin abscondere, to hide away, which combines abs and condere, to store up, conceal. And it says more at the word condiment. Interesting. Uh, circa 1578 to depart secretly and hide oneself. Absconder is the noun. Next we have abseil, A-B-S-E-I-L. It's from the, uh, I'm guessing G means German, abseilen, A-B-S-E-I-L-E-N, uh, from ab down, oh, ab, which means down or off, and sail, capital S-E-I-L, which means rope. Uh, 1941, chiefly British form, uh, it means, uh, synonym is repel. And maybe going forward, I will actually give the etymology afterwards, because sometimes I think it might make a little bit more sense. Next word is absence, A-B-S-E-N-C-E. -E. Uh, noun, number one, the state of being absent. Number two, the period of time that one is absent. Number three, synonyms are want and lack, as in an absence of detail. Number four, inattention to present surroundings or occurrences, as in absence of mind. Next is absent. We have three different entries for absent. First one is adjective. Number one, not present or attending synonym is missing. Number two, not existing, lacking. 
as in danger in a situation where power is absent. That's from M. H. Uh, Triton or Triton. Number three, lost in thought, not attentive. Synonym: see abstracted, and an adverb is absently. Okay, etymology for the word absent.、Uh, it is Middle English from Anglo-French,、uh, from the Latin absent or absens. Uh, which is of the word abesse, a b e s s e, which means to be absent, which is combining ab plus s a e s s e, which means to be,、uh, and you can see more at the word is i s. Next entry for absent is to keep oneself away. Third entry for absent is a preposition from 1944. In the absence of, without is a synonym. Next, we have absentee, noun from 1605, one that is absent. A, a proprietor that lives away from his or her estate or business. B, one missing from work or school. Next is absentee ballot, noun from 1889, a ballot submitted as by mail. In advance of an election, by a voter who is unable to be present at the polls, I strongly suggest at your next election that if there is a chance that you can't vote on election day, please fill out an absentee ballot. I was going to do mine for the、uh, 2018 midterms, but I ended up being able to go on election day, so I didn't even need to. Next, absenteeism,、uh, noun from 1829, one. Prolonged absence of an owner from his or her property. Number two, chronic absence, as from work or school. Also, the rate of such absence. Next is absent-minded, adjective from 1829. One, lost in thought and unaware of one's surroundings or actions.、Uh, synonym is preoccupied. Also, given to absence of mind. Number two. Indicative of or resulting from preoccupation or absence of mind. Synonym says see abstracted. Absent-mindedly is an adverb. Absent-mindedness is a noun. Next we have absent without leave. Adjective from 1793. Absent without authority from one's place of duty in the armed forces. Next we have absinth. A B S I N T H E, also spelled without the e at the end. From 1612, one wormwood is the synonym. Next,、uh, number two, a green liqueur which is flavored with wormwood, anise, and other aromatic herbs, and commercial production of which is banned in many countries for health concerns. Also, a liqueur res- resembling absinthe. I have heard many stories about, you know, absence.、Uh, absinthe makes you. Absinthe makes the heart grow fonder.、Uh, absinthe、uh, makes you see a green fairy, makes you hallucinate. They talked about this a little bit in the movie、uh, Moulin Rouge.、Um, I've never had it. I don't th- really think much of that is true. If you have too much, maybe you might, but、uh, I don't know. But I'd be curious to try it. Although I'm not a huge fan of anise, so. I probably won't love it.、Um, do I read this next one? It is a very long description, and、uh, I think I'll just leave it for next time.、Uh, thank you for listening. You can email me at dictionarypod at gmail dot com, or you can tweet at dictionarypod. Thank you, and good night. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode.、Um, By the way, right off the bat,、uh, if you want to、uh, tweet me, it's at dictionarypod, and if you want to、uh, email me, it's、uh, dictionarypod at gmail dot com. Let's get into it. First word for today is absolute. This is、uh, Middle English absolute with、uh, without the e at the end from、uh, a f. I think that means like Anglo. French Anglo something,、uh, which is from the Latin absolutus, 
uh, where, and the uh, the verb from that comes from is absolvere, which means to set free, or absolve. Uh, around the 14th century, one a free from imperfection. Synonym is perfect, as in it is a most absolute and excellent horse. That's from Shakespeare. One b free of relatively nope free or relatively free from mixture as a uh, synonym is pure as in absolute alcohol 1c synonym is outright unmitigated as in an absolute lie uh, number two being governed by or characteristic of a ruler or authority completely free from constitutional or other restraint as in absolute power we don't like that 3a standing apart from a normal or usual syntactical relation uh, with other words or sentence elements as in the absolute construction this being the case in the sentence quote this being the case let us go end quote 3b of an adjective or possessive pronoun standing alone without a modified substantive as in blind in help the blind and ours in your work and ours are absolute this is a little complicated there are parts in quotes and parts in italics um so i guess in help the blind the word blind is considered absolute because it is of an adjective or possessive pronoun does that make sense Maybe you need to re-listen. Maybe I need to re-listen. 3C, of a verb. So, similar type of situation here. Having no object in the particular construction under consideration, though normally transitive, as in, uh, the quote is, if looks could kill, the word kill is an absolute verb. 4, having no restriction, exception, or qualification, as in an absolute requirement or absolute freedom. Five, synonyms are positive and unquestionable, as in absolute proof. 6a, independent of arbitrary standards of measurement. 6b, relating to or derived in the simplest manner from the fundamental units of length, mass, and time, as in absolute electric units. Uh, 6C, relating to, measured on, or being a temperature scale based on absolute zero, as in absolute temperature. Specifically, Kelvin is, uh, it says, as in 10 degrees absolute. Um, I think, ugh, I, know, I know a little bit about temperatures and Kelvin, but not enough to give you a better description. Moving on, number seven. Fundamental, ultimate, those are synonyms, as in absolute knowledge. Number eight, perfectly embodying the nature of a thing, as in absolute justice. Number nine, being self-sufficient and free of external references or relationships, as in an absolute term in logic or absolute music. Number 10, being the true distance from an aircraft to the Earth's surface, as in absolute altitude. Uh, absoluteness and absolute are noun forms, um, and the word is absolute. That, I think, is the word that so far has had the most amount of definitions, 10, and uh, some of them had, uh, had A, B, and C behind them as well. Anyway, moving on, absolute ceiling. A noun from around 1920, the maximum height above sea level at which a particular airplane can maintain horizontal flight under standard air conditions, called also just ceiling. Absolute convergence, noun from 1893, convergence of a mathematical series when the absolute values of the terms are taken. Absolute humidity, noun from 1867, the amount of water vapor present in a unit volume of air, uh, and says compare to relative humidity. Next is absolutely, adverb, uh, 14th century. One, in an absolute manner or condition, 
often used as an intensive, as in absolutely brilliant. Like me. No, just kidding. Number two, with respect to absolute values, as in an absolutely convergent series. Next is absolute magnitude. I think this is going to be the episode of absolute. Uh, so absolute magnitude, noun from 1902, a measure of the intrinsic luminosity of a celestial body as a star expressed as the apparent magnitude the body would have if viewed from a distance of 10 parsecs. A measure of the intrinsic luminosity of a celestial... So I think it has to do with basically the brightness of a star based on its distance, and it's a uh, like a standard measurement, I think is what it's saying, from 10 parsecs. Next is absolute pitch, noun from 1864. One, the position of a tone in a standard scale independently determined by its rate of vibration. Two, the ability to recognize or sing a given isolated note, called also perfect pitch. I don't have perfect pitch, but I'm not too bad, I don't think. Next is absolute space, noun from 1710. And it just has a synonym that says space, and then it has a 4B after it. Uh, so maybe when we go to the term space, uh, there will be some more description about absolute space. Next is absolute value, noun from 1889. One, a non-negative number equal in numerical value to a given real number. Uh, so when you see um, the two vertical lines and then there's a number or a, a positive or a negative number in the middle, in between the two vertical lines, the absolute value is the, uh, and the non-negative version of that, so the positive number. Number two, the positive square root of the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary parts of a complex number. Yep, that's simple enough. Absolute zero, noun from 1808, a theoretical temperature characterized by complete absence of heat and motion and equivalent to exactly negative 273.15 degrees Celsius or negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I'm remembering correctly, that might be zero degrees Kelvin. Um, I know that negative 273 degrees Celsius is related to Kelvin in some way, and I'm just not completely sure. Moving on, absolution, noun from the 13th century, the act of absolving, specifically a remission of sins pronounced by a priest, as in the sacrament of reconciliation. Next is absolutism, noun from 1830, 1A, a political theory that absolute power should be vested in one or more rulers. 1B, government by an absolute ruler or, or authority. Synonym is despotism. Number two, advocacy of a rule by absolute standards or principles. Three, an absolute standard or principle. Absolutist is a noun or adjective. An absolutistic is an adjective. Uh, I think we'll end the episode there. And uh, for those keeping track, I know I haven't been doing a good job. We just read the first quarter or so of the fifth page, the official fifth page of the dictionary. And uh, I will talk to you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Hello, word nerds again. Let's get right into it. Absolutive adjective from 1948 of relating to or being blah, 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 of relating to or being an inflectional inflectional yep inflectional morpheme that is m o r p h e m e morpheme that typically marks the subject of an intransitive verb or the direct object of a transitive verb in an ergative language language or ergative i'm not sure uh yep don't know what that means moving on absolutize uh verb 
Yep, from 1919. To make absolute, convert into an absolute. Next is absolve. This is from、uh, Middle English, from the Latin absolvere, from,、uh, which is combined from ab and solvere, which means to loosen.、Um, and there's more information at the word solve. 15th century.、Uh, number one, to set free from an obligation or the consequences of guilt. Two, to remit a sin by absolution. Synonym is exculpate. Exculpate. Yep. E X C U L P A T E. And absolver is a noun. <clears throat> Next is absorb. Verb from the、uh, Anglo French absorbir, which means to swallow up, which is from the Latin absorbere, A B S O R B E R E. And the、uh, second to last E has a line across the top. Which is、uh, made from ab and sorbere to suck up.、Uh, it says akin to lith, lith surbti to sip.、Uh, lith, maybe that's Lithuanian, I'm not sure. So this word s u r b t i means to sip. And then it also says Greek,、uh, just as g k, but I think that's Greek. Rofane. Uh, R O P H E I N. I don't know if the P H makes a F sound, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Rofane, which means to gulp down. From the 15th century. One, to take in and make part of an existent whole. As in the capacity of China to absorb invaders. 2A, to suck up or take up. As in a sponge absorbs water. Or charcoal absorbs gas, or plant, root, plant roots absorb water. To be, to take in. Synonyms are acquire and learn, as in convictions absorbed in youth. That's from M. R. Cohen. To see. Synonyms are use up, consume, as in the, fe- the fever absorbed her strength. Number three. To engage or engross wholly, and that's W H O L L Y, as in absorbed in thought. I'm often absorbed in thought. 4A, number one. So there's three different forms of 4A, and f- there's also a 4B. Anyway, 4A1, to receive without recoil or echo, as in provided. With a sound absorbing surface. For A2, synonyms,、uh, synonyms are endure and sustain, as in absorbing hardships. For A3, assume and bear are synonyms, as in the expenses were absorbed by the company. For B, to transform radiant energy. Into a different form, especially with a resulting rise in temperature, as in the earth absorbs the sun's rays. Absorbability is a noun, absorbable is adjective, and absorber are,、uh, is a noun. And this word is starting to sound really weird, as, as often happens when you say a word or see a word many times. Next, we have absorbance. Noun from 1947. The ability of a layer of a substance. Let's make sure I read that right. The ability of a layer of a substance to absorb radiation expressed mathematically as the negative common logarithm of transmittance. Absorbance. Next, we have absorbency. This is a noun from 1859. One, the quality or state of being absorbent. Two, it's a slightly different spelling, absorbency. The first one is a B E N C Y, and this one, another spelling can be B A N S, or no, C Y. And then the、uh, synonym just says absorbance. That's it. Great. Next word is absorbent. A B S O R B E N T, 
or it can be spelled B-A-N-T. Adjective from the Latin absorbent, absorbens, which is from absorbere, 1718, able to absorb, as in as absorbent as a sponge, like a child's brain. Next, we have absorbing, adjective from 1876, fully taking one's attention. Engrossing is a synonym, uh, as in an absorbing novel. Absorbing, ab blah, blah, blah. Absorbingly is the adverb. Next, we have abs. Nope, this is different. Absorptance. A B S O R P T A N C. Absorptant. Absorptance. There we go. Uh, noun from absorption uh, and adding an A N C E at the end from around 1931. The ratio of the radiant energy absorbed by a body to that incident upon it. Here's a fun one. Absorptiometry. Is that right? A-B-S-O-R-P-T-I-O-M-E-T-R-Y. Absorp... No, wait. Absorption... Absorptiometry? Absorptiometry. Absorpt absorptiometry. I think that is correct. Apologies for stumbling through this. Okay, uh, noun from absorption and adding metry at the end, 1951. Measurement of the amount of radiation absorbed as by living tissue, especially to determine density. It says compare it to dual energy x-ray absorptiometry. Absorp... I guess that's how... It, the sh sounds weird to me, but I don't know this word. Next, we have absorption. Uh, noun, it is looking like French and Latin. Latin is from absorption, which is ab plus sorptio, uh, which is from absorbere. 1741, 1a, the process of absorbing or of being absorbed. Compare it to the word adsorption. 1b, interception of radiant energy or sound waves. 2, entire occupation of the mind, as in absorption in his work. Absorptive is the adjective. Next is absorption band, noun from 1865, a dark band in an absorption spectrum. Also is called an absorption line. I'm very curious what that is. I might have to look that up. Next is absorption line, what we just said. Uh, noun from around 1889, a dark line in an absorption spectrum. So it's either a band or a line. Next and uh, last word for this episode is absorption spectrum. Oh, funny you should mention absorption spectrum. Noun from 1869, an electromagnetic spectrum in which a decrease in intensity of radiation at specific wavelengths or ranges of wavelengths characteristic of an absorb absorbing substance is manifested, especially as a pattern of dark lines or bands. I think I know a little bit about this, but um, like I know different uh, stars or planets give off different, I guess it's electromagnetic spectrums, uh, different, uh, you know, visual light and, and not visual light wavelengths uh, that are different colors and things. So that's probably related to that. But uh, yeah, I might need to look and see it visually because I'm kind of a visual learner. And with that, we will end this episode. Thank you for listening all the way through, which most of you probably didn't do. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And I will talk to you in the next one. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary, read by me, Spencer. So, we are on the second column of two columns on the fifth page at the very top. First word today is absorptivity. A-B-S-O-R-P-T-I-V-I-T-Y. Circa 1859, 
the property of a body that determines the fraction of incident radiation absorbed by the body. Next is abstain from the uh, Middle English. Man, every time I see that M-E, I want to think I want to say Middle Earth. We're not talking about that. Middle English, abstinum, A-B-S-T-E-I-N-E-N, abstinen, from the Anglo-French astein, A-S-T-E-I-N, uh, stem of astenir, or abstenir, both versions are in here, from the Latin abstinere, which is from uh, ab, or abs, plus tenere, which means to hold. Uh, and there's more information at the word thin. Uh, this is from the 14th century. To refrain deliberately and often with an effort of self-denial from an action or practice, as in abstain from drinking, and abstainer is the noun. Next is abstemious. Uh, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. Abstemious, A B. S-T-E-M-I-O-U-S, adjective from uh, 1609. I'll give the etymology afterwards. I'm trying to get into the habit of that. Uh, marked by restraint, especially in the consumption of food or alcohol, also reflecting such restraint, as in an abstemious diet. Abstemiously is an adverb, and abstemiousness, it's a fun word to say, is the noun. Uh, so the etymology is from the Latin abstemius, A-B-S-T-E-M-I-U-S, um, and that is from adding abs and temius, uh, which is akin to the Latin temetum, temetum uh, which is intoxicating drink, T-E-M-E-T-U-M. -E temetum, don't know how to pronounce that word. Next is abstention, A-B-S-T-E-N-T-I-O-N, -E a noun from 1521, the act or practice of abstaining. Abstentious is the adjective. The etymology is, uh, let's see, it looks like Latin, abstention, abstentio, from the Latin abstentere. I should probably keep a Latin dictionary here too, I don't know all the words. In fact, I know very few of them anymore. All right, next is abscis, nope, abs, abstinence. It's divided out by the syllables. There's dots in between, so sometimes I get a little confused. Abstinence, A-B-S-T-I-N-E-N-C-E. -E. Noun, from 14th century. One, voluntary forbearance, especially from indulgence of an appetite or craving, or from eating some foods. 2A. Habitual abstaining from intoxicating beverages. 2B. Abstention from sexual intercourse. Abstinent is the adjective, and abstinently is the adverb. Uh, this is from the Middle... Nope, not Middle Earth. Middle English. From Anglo-French. From Latin. Abstinentia. Ab yep, abstinentia. From uh, abstinent, abstinens. Uh, which is from absten abstinere. Yep. Next we have A B S T R, just those letters, which is an abbreviation for the word abstract. Next is the word abstract. This is an adjective from the 14th century. 1A, disassociated from any specific instance as in an abstract entity. 1b, difficult to understand. Synonym is abstruse, A-B-S-T-R-U-S-E, as in abstract problems. 1c, insufficiently factual. Synonym is formal, as in possessed only an abstract right. 2, expressing a quality apart from an object, as in the word poem is concrete, poetry is abstract. 3a, dealing with a subject in its abstract aspects. Theoretical is a synonym, 
as in abstract science. 3b. Uh, synonyms are impersonal and detached, as in the abstract compassion of a surgeon. That is from Time. Time magazine, I assume. 4. Having only intrinsic form with little or no attempt at uh, pictorial representation or narrative content, as in abstract painting. And abstract art is obviously a very big thing, so I kind of want to read that description again. Number four, having only intrinsic form with little or no attempt at pictorial representation or narrative content. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, next is abstractly, uh, which is the adverb. Abstractness is the noun. Etymology is uh, middle Latin, ML? Abstractus, from the Latin uh, verb abstrahere, which means to drag away, which combines ab or abs plus trahere, which means to pull or draw. Next is uh, the second form of abstract. It looks like we have three total. Uh, this one is uh, noun number one, oh, from 15th century. Number one, a summary of points as of a writing, usually presented in skeletal form. Also, something that summarizes or concentrates the essentials of a larger thing or several things. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a shortened version of a, of a larger uh, essay or a journal, uh, you know, a scientific journal, that sort of thing. Abstract is just the kind of like the highlights. Number two, an abstract thing or state. Number three, synonym is abstraction for a. It's the second time I've seen that. So yeah, again, we might have to uh, go see what those other words say. Etymology is uh, Middle English from the Latin abstractus. All right, third and final form of the word abstract. It is a verb from 1542. One, synonyms are remove and separate. Number two, to consider apart from application to or association with a particular instance. Number three, to make an abstract of. Synonym is summarize. Four, to draw away the attention of. Five, steel and purloin are synonyms. Uh, to make an abstraction. Abstractable is the adjective. Abstractor or abstractor, O-R or E-R, are the noun forms. And with that, I think we will end this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And just to give you a taste of next episode, first word will be abstracted. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Hello, word nerds. Thank you for joining me for another episode. If you listened all the way through the last episode, which of course I strongly suggest you do to all episodes, uh, because how else are you going to uh, learn the dictionary? Uh, you would have heard that the next word is abstracted. This is an adjective from 1643. Number one, withdrawn in mind, inattentive to one's surroundings, as in said hello but seemed abstracted. Number two, abstract is the synonym as in uh, abstracted geometric shapes. Abstractedly is the adverb and abstractedness is the noun. Uh, we have some synonym information here. Abstracted, preoccupied, absent, absent-minded, distracted. Uh, they mean inattentive to what claims or demands consideration. Abstracted implies absorption of the mind in something other than one's surroundings and often suggests reflection on weighty matters, as in walking about with an abstracted air. Preoccupied often implies having one's attention so taken up by thoughts as to neglect others, as in too preoccupied with her debts to enjoy the meal. Absent 
stresses inability to fix the mind on present concerns do more to mental wandering than to concentration on other matters, as in an absent stare. Absent-minded implies that the mind is fixed elsewhere and often refers to a habit of abstractedness, as in so absent-minded he has been known to wear mismatched shoes. Uh, and a little side note here, uh, I actually did wear mismatched shoes in junior high, two different colored Converse because I was weird and I still am, I guess, but I don't do that anymore. But I wasn't, I didn't do it because I was absent-minded. I just wanted to be different. Uh, and then the final synonym, distracted, may suggest an inability to concentrate caused Sorry, I got distracted because I read the wrong line, and it said, in my mind, distracted may suggest an inability to wear mismatched shoes. Nope, that's not what it says, but that was kind of funny. All right, let me read this correctly this time. Distracted may suggest an inability to concentrate caused by worry, sorrow, or anxiety, as in was too distracted by grief to continue working. All right, I do appreciate when they uh, give all those synonyms and all that um, information for each one because it, uh, I think it really gives you a better picture of the word if you don't know what the word already is. Uh, but it is kind of long to read. Next is abstract expressionism. Uh, noun, it's often capitalized as A and E from 1951, an artistic movement of the mid-20th century comprising diverse styles and techniques and emphasizing especially an artist's liberty to convey attitudes and emotions through non-traditional and usually non-representational means. Abstract expressionist uh, would be the noun or adjective. Abstraction. Noun from 1549. 1a. The act or process of abstracting the state of being abstracted. 1b. An abstract idea or term. 2. Absence of mind or preoccupation. 3. Abstract quality or character. 4a. An abstract composition or creation in art. 4b. Synonym is abstractionism. That's all for 4b. Abstractional is the adjective. Abstractive is the adjective. Another, another adjective. Next entry is abstractionism. Noun from 1926. The principles or practice of creating abstract art. Abstractionist is uh, adjective or noun. Next we have abstract of title. 1858. A summary statement of the successive conveyances and other facts on which a title to a piece of land rests. Next is abstruse. A B S T R U S E. Adjective. From 1599. Difficult to comprehend. Synonym is re recondite, recondite. I'm not exactly sure of the pronunciation of that, R-E-C-O-N-D-I-T-E, -E, as in the abstruse calculations of math mathematicians. Abstrusely is uh, adverb, abstruseness is noun. Uh, the etymology for this one is uh, Latin from abstrusus, abstrusus, which is from the verb abstrudere, which means to conceal, and it is formed from ab plus trudere, which means to push. And there's more information at the word threat. So abstruse. I have never heard this word. I'm just going to reread it quickly. Difficult to comprehend. Oh, funny. This word abstruse is abstruse because it is difficult to comprehend. No, but now I comprehend it, so it's not anymore. All right, moving on. Abstrusity. A B S T R U. S-I-T-Y. Noun from 1646. One, the quality or state of being abstruse. Abstruseness is a synonym. Number two, 
something that is abstruse. Next, we have the first form of the word absurd. Adjective from 1557. One, ridiculously unreasonable, unsound, or incongruous, as in an absurd argument. Two, having no rational or orderly relationship to human life. Meaningless is a synonym, as in an absurd universe. Also, lacking order or value, as in an absurd existence. Number three, dealing with the absurd or with abs absurdism, as in absurd theater, absurd theater. Again, words get weird when you say them a lot. Adverb is absurdly, a noun is absurdness. Etymology for this is uh, MF, Middle French, I'm assuming. Um, absurd, A-B-S-U-R-D-E. I know I did not pronounce that correctly. From the Latin absurdus, which is formed from combining ab and surdus, S-U-R-D-U-S, which means deaf or stupid. That's interesting. Hmm, okay. Second form of absurd is a noun from 1946, the state or condition in which human beings exist in an irrational and meaningless universe and in which human life has no ultimate meaning, usually used with the, so the absurd. That's kind of how I feel like we live. <laughs> Rational and meaningless universe. But sometimes I don't feel like that, so I have no idea. Uh, next and last entry for today is absurdism. Noun from 1946, a philosophy based on the belief that the universe is irrational and meaningless and that the search for order brings the individual into conflict with the universe. It says, compared to the word existentialism. And as a quick little side note, uh, I, I have, and uh, when I was a kid, I got these Dr. Demento anniversary uh, cassettes and then CDs and there was a song on there, something about existentialism, and uh, it was a very strange but wonderful song. And with that, that is the end of our episode. And uh, let's see, I have to turn the page to get the word for the next one. Next word is absurdist. Top of page six. Thank you for listening. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, that sounded like I was getting off the phone. I'm not. Hello, and welcome to the next episode of The Dictionary. Right off the bat, just a reminder, you can email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com or on Twitter at dictionarypod. All right, first word for today is absurdist. Adjective from 1946, of relating to or characterized by the absurd or by absurdism. And absurd is a synonym. Um as in absurd literature or absurdist literature and an absurdist sense of humor. I think I have a little bit of an absurdist sense of humor. Um, absurdist can also be a noun. I am an absurdist, you could say. Next we have absurdity, noun from 1528. I wonder why absurdity came like 400 years before absurdist. Uh, number one, the quality or state of being absurd. Absurdness is a synonym. Number two, something that is absurd, like our political state in America. Next, we have a bubble. That's a fun word to say. Uh, it is an adjective, circa 1869. One, being in the process of bubbling. And two, being in a state of agitated activity or motion. A stir, A-S-T-I-R, is a synonym. By the way, a bubble is spelled just uh, with the word bubble and the word A at the front. A bubble. Next, we have a building. A with the word building after it. Adjective from 1535. Being in the process of building or of being built. Next, we have Abulia, A-B-U-L-I-A, noun, 
circa 1864, abnormal lack of ability to act or to make decisions. Abulic or abulic is the adjective. Next we have abundance, noun from the 14th century, one, an ample quantity. Profusion is a synonym. Number two just has two synonyms, affluence and wealth. Number three, relative degree of plentifulness, as in low abundances of uranium and thorium. Uh, that is from H.C. Yuri, U-R-E-Y. And that, uh, that quote reminded me of a song from, ooh, I am blanking on his name, Tom, something humorist, um, played the piano. He was also a scientist, and he's got a great, great, great old song about the periodic table. Um, specifically, I think it's just called The Elements. So if you've never heard that, you should definitely check it out. Uh, there's one part where I think he says thulium and thallium and thorium and something. Anyway, that's a fun song. Next, we have abundant, adjective from 14th century, 1a, marked by great plenty as of resources, as in a fair and abundant land, 1b, amply supplied, synonym is abounding, as in an area abundant with bird life, 2, occurring in abundance, ample is the synonym, as in Abundant rainfall. Another synonym is plentiful. Abundantly is the adverb. And uh, the etymology for this is Middle English from Anglo-French from the Latin abundant, abundance. And this is from the uh, verb abundare, which means to abound. Next, we have uh, abuse, first form of abuse. This is a noun from 15th century. One, a corrupt practice or custom. Two, improper or excessive use or treatment. Misuse is a synonym, as in drug abuse. Three, this is an obsolete form, a deceitful act. Deception is a synonym. Number four, language that condemns or vilifies, usually unjustly, intent intemperately and angrily. Number five, physical maltreatment. And now we have a section about synonyms. Uh, starts with the original word abuse. Uh, vituperation, vituperation, invective, obloquy, oh, I don't know that word, O-B-L-O-Q-U-Y, Billingsgate, mean vehemently, sorry, let me start that over. Uh, so the one, two, three, four, five words are abuse, vituperation, invective, obloquy, and billingsgate. I'm getting a call and I don't know that number, so I'm going to ignore it. Those mean vehemently expressed condemnation or disapproval. Abuse, the most general term, usually implies the anger of the speaker and stresses the harshness of the language, as in scathing verbal of the abuse. Vituperation implies fluent and sustained abuse, as in a torrent of vituperation. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, invective implies a comparable vehemence, but suggests greater verbal and rhetorical skill and may apply to a public denunciation, as in blistering political invective. Obloquy, maybe suggests defamation and consequent shame and disgrace, as in subjected to obloquy and derision. And apologies if I'm completely butchering that word, although I can't imagine very many of you already know it. Although if you're listening to this podcast, maybe you do. Uh, let's see, Billingsgate implies practiced fluency and variety of profane or obscene abuse, as in di directed a stream of Billingsgate at the cab driver. Those are all words that I really either have never heard or just never knew the meaning of. And again, this is why I'm reading the dictionary, because I find this stuff fascinating, and I really don't have a large vocabulary. Next, we have a second form of, of abuse. This one's much shorter. 
Uh, from the 15th, oh, wait, let me backtrack. The etymology of the uh, of the word abuse, Middle English from uh, Middle French, abu, I don't know, A-B-U-S, which is from the Latin abusus, A-B-U-S-U-S, which is from abuti, which means to consume. And that is combining ab plus uti, U-T-I, which means to use. All right, so the second form of abuse is a, a, a verb from 15th century, 1A, to put to a wrong or improper use, as in abuse a privilege. So it's more like abuse and not abuse. Yes, in fact, I'm looking at the uh, pronunciation. The uh, pronunciation for the first one has an S at the end, and this second one has a Z, so it's abuse. 1B, to use excessively, as in abuse alcohol. Also, to use with medical justification, as in abusing painkillers. Number two is an obsolete form, just has the synonym deceive. Number three, to, to use so as to injure or damage. Maltreat is a synonym. Four, to attack in words. Revile is a synonym. Abusable is the adjective and abuser is the noun. Next we have abusive. Adjective from 1583. One, characterized by wrong or improper use or action, especially the word corrupt, as in abusive financial practices. Two, A, using harsh insulting language, as in an angry and abusive crowd. Two, B, characterized by or serving for abuse, as in abusive language. To C, physically injurious, as in abusive behavior. Abusively is the adverb, and abusiveness is the noun. Next we have a but. No, that is not what you're thinking. This is uh, spelled A-B-U-T, a verb, abutted, abutting, are uh, other forms. This is from 15th century. One, to touch a long... I'm getting confused on the lines. To touch along a border or with a projecting part, as in land abuts on the road. To A, to terminate at a point of contact. To B, to lean for support. And we have another set of one and two. Uh, number one, to border on, as in their property abuts our land. Two, to cause to abut. Etymology for this is uh, Middle English, abutten, A-B-U-T-T-E-N, which is from Anglo-French, a boater, A-B-O-T-E-R, or a boater, something like that, um, or a booter, A-B-U-T-E-R, partly from O-F. I'm not sure what O-F is, but I'm guessing it's something fr old French, maybe? Um, a boater, to border on, which is from... Uh, Latin A or AD plus bout, B-O-U-T, which means blow or end. And it's also from boter, B-O-T-E-R, which means to strike. It's also partly from O-F, maybe Old French, abuter, A-B-U-T-E-R, to come to an end, which is from uh, A plus B-U-T, but end or aim. That's what that means. And there's more information at the word but, B-U-T-T. -T. Moving on. Uh, actually, we are moving on to the next episode because I'm going to stop there. We finished the first quarter of the sixth page. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, I started both a Facebook page and a Patreon page. Um, I think I can put the information in the episode link, so I will try and remember to do that. Spencer, remember to do that. All right, thank you for listening. See you in the next episode.